What do you get when you combine an Italian company already famous for its products with an American company also famous for its products? Another good product. Hello and welcome to Front Stroke. Today's episode features the Olivetti Underwood 21. When people think of globalism, they often point to the modern auto industry. But truth be told, it began when the ashes of World War II were still smoldering. Olivetti was world famous for its Lettera 22 model, voted as the best design product of the last century by the Illinois Institute of Technology, not even the ubiquitous Royal Quiet Deluxe got such accolades. The Model 21 was born during a desperate time for the company. They had acquired American icon Underwood, who had been losing customers since the end of the war and was racking up debt. Despite this new asset, the company's director, Adriano Olivetti, died of a sudden heart attack in February 1960. Worse still, the company was on the verge of bankruptcy, in a bold attempt, they rebranded their earlier machines with the Underwood name and then released a thinly disguised version of the Studio 44, which was famous for its association with authors like Tennessee Williams and Ralph Ellison. The end result was the Olivetti Underwood 21. The Olivetti 21 is a portable typewriter. Barely. It's just a few inches shy of being a full-blown office model, not only is it wide and heavy, it's long. Here it is compared to the Olympia SM9. The position of the rubber feet is identical, but the keyboard will hang over the edge of the typing desk. Not necessarily a bad thing, as I don't like scrunching myself under the typing surface. The machine is identified by a distinct two-tone color scheme and a plaque on the front of the top plate. Mine is conveniently missing. So here are some pictures. It's either a silver plaque with black letters or a black plaque with silver letters. No matter what the label says, it's an Italian design being marketed to American customers. The machine is mechanically identical to the Studio 44, but the outer shell resembles the letter of 32 with its slanting top plate and defined lines. The controls and their layout are identical to the Studio 44 folding carriage return lever, metal bail bar rollers, line spacing that goes from 1 to 3, Olivetti's signature red tabulating button, and a retractable paper support. The carrying case is hard plastic and breaks into two pieces. It has a compartment for storing extra paper. The machine does not lock into the bottom half of the container, so take care if your latch is broken. The Model 21 has a touch regulator in the front of the left ribbon spool. It's not numbered like comparable Royal or Underwood machines. Instead, Olivetti made small notches in the metal itself to measure the level of resistance. But I'll make it easy for you. Pull the tab all the way towards you for the lightest setting and push it forward for the heaviest. Even on the lightest setting, I find the 21 has a heavy typing action. I myself cannot write continuously on this portable without taking a break ever so often. As such, I wouldn't recommend it to anyone with small or weaker hands like mine. It's not a bad feel, just heavy. The keyboard itself has a great layout. The key tops are the right distance apart, which lessens my chances of striking too accidentally and jamming the action. One of the quirks I love about this machine is how I can roll the paper through the platen without jamming the paper on the bail rollers. The 21 is the only machine in my collection that can do this. The bail bar is non-adjustable. It either rests on the platen or stands upright. I don't have to spend an extra second moving it every time I change pages. 
I have a theory as to why it works. The bale rollers and the paper guides are very close to each other. The angle of the carriage allows the paper to approach it at an angle, and the serrated edges of the bale rollers grabs the paper like the teeth of a gear. I'm not sure if other Olivetti machines can do this. They used metal rollers from their very first machines in the early 1940s, but I can't experiment since this is the only one in my possession. Another odd quirk is the acoustic difference. When you start a line of text, it has a very brash, clunky sound. However, as you get to the last few spaces of the margin, it lightens and almost achieves the iconic tapping noise that people are familiar with in Hollywood movies. In practice, the only machine of mine that comes close to achieving this consistently are my Royals, specifically the KMM and the Quiet Deluxe. And let's face it, Hollywood edits their films like crazy. Still, I find it interesting that the sound of the machine changes from one side of the carriage to the next. It's just... odd. If you want an Olivetti but don't want to pay outrageous prices for the better-known Lettera models, I'd recommend the 21. It's not the best for light-handed typists, but it's a good machine that won't disappoint. You can usually find them for under $50. Mine was a Goodwill purchase for $15. So far, the only cleaning I've done was to remove some crusty liquid from the top plate and change out the ribbon. I've written dozens of pages in the short time it's been with me, and I think it can look forward to many years of use. As always, be sure to thoroughly test a machine before you buy it, and avoid online sellers unless they can promise you that they will safely ship it to your location, and they can verify its condition. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Ciao.